Hi guys, Tracy here. Um, I am busy Wednesday night when I'm trying to do my lives and so I'm pre-recording this um, how-to video to play in place of my lives. So my table's a mess. I've been posting stuff for sale tonight and shipping it to um, all over the U.S. I'm trying to keep cleaning my basement to make it more like user friendly for my kids so okay um i know that my phone hates uploading really long videos so i'm gonna get right to work i'm playing with distressed oxides tonight i keep telling you guys oh you can do more with them but that's what not what i'm doing in this video so this time i'm actually going to do some of those things i keep referring to so I've got picked raspberry, spiced marmalade, mowed lawn, and chipped sapphire. I'm not going to use them all at the same time, but I'm going to um, play around with them a little bit and make a couple cards. This is my all-purpose mat. It's a non-stick mat, and you can see I'm just uh, applying my inks right to the mat. Now I've got this spray mister. We used to carry these. Um, I still have a few left um, that I had not opened or sold. So I sprayed that with water. And then I'm just this first time going to go right into that. And I'm, I'm going to hopefully not make it muddy. I'm just twisting it slightly to get a little extra color on. So there's this one. I'm going to let that dry. I'm going to spread some of the color around a little bit more because you can see that was, you know, half and half. So I kind of want my color to maybe blend a little bit. Getting a little bit of blue on here, but I think that will be fine. Let me spray this again. all over I really I want the colors to kind of mesh a little bit so I'm just kind of pushing color towards each other and just kind of thinking about where I want to place this I think I'm gonna go right here Ooh, I picked it up on my finger Ooh, that's pretty now you can see it kind of rolling I'm gonna see if I've got my I have my heat tool here I'm gonna heat these they'll take a little bit of time to dry going to hit them with, oops, a little bit of heat, and then wipe up my mess. Yes, I dropped that on the floor. <laughs> um, I have some baby wipes in my room. Going to clean this up. I really didn't waste a bunch of ink. I didn't put that much on there, but the water really spreads it out so okay now I've got um, let's see here I've got a we get a paper towel in the other room okay do not think to bring that out all right, I just want to dry that up a little bit so it's not soaking wet. Now I've got a couple other colors here. That was picked raspberry and the chip sapphire. Now I've got, just making sure that's dry. I've got, I'm gonna do this just a little bit differently. I've got um, spiced marmalade and 
mowed lawn and I'm just kind of mixing these together. I wanted them a little more mixed. Okay. Now I'm not going to spray it quite as heavily. Just like that. Put one here. And I think I want those mixed a little bit more. I'm going to add some more green. One spritz. And now I'll put my last piece in. Ooh, I like that. Okay. So now let me go ahead and wipe this off again with my baby wipe and then I'm going to dry it with my paper towel okay so I've added distressed oxides that's what I was using distressed oxide inks now I want a little bit of a different kind of splatter. I've been pulling my watercolor paints out quite a bit. Um, this is the set that we carry. It's very similar to sets elsewhere. Um, but if you're already paying shipping for something, it helps to just get it all at once. Okay. So... I might not have enough water. I don't. This is just some black paint, watercolor paint. And all I'm trying to do is add some black splatters. Try and make sure this can be seen. I haven't used this paintbrush in a while. Not that that is a problem, but it's not super wet. So you can see I'm tapping. Okay, now I'm getting some black. Tapping pretty hard, but there's not a lot of moisture on this paintbrush. And that's, there we go. That's what I needed. Okay. So now I've got some splattery background like that. I'm going to do the same to these. That one. And that one. Okay. That's pretty good. I'm going to wipe my paintbrush out. Hope you can hear me okay. I keep like moving um, I should be good now. Okay, so then you've got these pretty backgrounds. No two are exactly alike. And I've got some um, stamps that I might pull from. I'm thinking about, I've got this pretty one with the butterfly. And... Let's see. I might pull this one. I already pre-cut the sapphire cardstock. So these I may finish after my video's over and post them um, in the morning. Because I only cut the sapphire cardstock. So I might just stick with that one for now. So there's so many different things you can do. That's really just your patterned paper. I've got these gigantic flowers that I love. I've got um, this Just a Note stamp set. And I actually, just for something quick, because the main point in today's video was really showing you how to do those backgrounds. Um, the all-purpose mat is your friend for this type of stuff. You saw how easy it cleaned up. 
I'm gonna go ahead. I took my just a note stamp off. And I'm just looking for the size block I want. Mm, I don't have the size I want out here. I'm gonna use one that's a little bit bigger. I don't normally like to use ones that are bigger, but. Okay, so I, ooh, I know what I'm gonna do. I want my foam underneath my stamping, okay? And then, if I can find it, I may have put it away. Um, let's see. So I actually did a fair bit of cleaning not that long ago. And of course I'm starting to pull everything back out again. Look at these, these craft jars. If you've been uh, eyeing these up in the catalog and thinking they were like our tiny ones that used to fit, you know, in one of our old containers, these are pretty big and I'm transferring all of my sequins over to those so I can find stuff easier. I really like those. I'm not using those sequins. They were just in my way. I'm digging on the side. I'm looking for my, there it is, my Versamark ink and my gold embossing powder. If you've been paying attention, I've been using that a lot. A lot, a lot. I think I'm going to go ahead and add before I, before or after, I'll do that after. Okay, I'm going to go ahead. I really, do you see in this background how pretty that is? You know, it's got the white showing through. I just really think that turned out nice. I want um, to ink my Just a Note up with this clear, sticky Versamark ink pad. You can see I'm going over it quite a bit. I really want good coverage, and this is a big stamp. It's solid. It's got big letters. So I'm turning this towards me. I want it to be right in the middle. I'm pressing evenly, pushing it in the paper. It's nice and sticky. I hope that this works okay. It's hard to, it's really hard to see and I probably should have gone over it with my anti-static cloth. So if this one doesn't work, I'll try on the other one. It's just hard to see. And I was not thinking about that anti-static cloth. So hopefully, hopefully, Oh yeah, this is working good. Okay. Just hard to tell. Now I do have some stray um, embossing powder on here because it is sticking to that background I just made. A little bit, not too bad. The anti-static cloth would have certainly come in handy. So I put the excess back in there. I really like this background. That turned out neat. Um, let me get my, I'm going to heat this up with my heat gun so you can see the metallic color melt. takes a minute to get going but once it starts then it goes pretty quickly this is a heat gun not a like a hair blower you don't want to use that oh the bottom's heating that's why I didn't even notice okay can never quite tell where this is aiming at but you can see the bottom word melting
once it melts like this, then it's permanent. Before this, you would be able to wipe all the powder off. My bottom of my end is just being stubborn. There we go. And then you just keep moving up to the next part. Now it's going much faster. I think you should be able to see that. It is heat, so it does take, you know, a couple minutes for it to really warm up. This blows heat. It doesn't blow it. It just is heat versus like a hair blower, hair dryer that blows air. This is hot. Okay. Isn't that pretty? Pretty, pretty. Let me make sure it melted good. It's really weird in areas. But it's permanent. It melted. I think it's just because the um, distress oxides change your paper, like change, it's hard to explain, so then not all of it got like a bumpy shiny, it's kind of a textured shiny, I'm not sure if you can see that, some of it is super shiny and some of it is more of a matte finish, but it feels permanent, it's not coming off. And you can see how the black watercolor paint shows through the embossing. That looks cool. Okay, I am so excited. So I'm going to finish this card on the live, and then I'm going to finish the others separately and just show them as a picture when I'm done. I think finishing this card gives you an idea of the technique. And then um, it'll give me a chance to kind of dig through and see what else I want to use. Really like this. Now the Chip Sapphire Distressed Oxide, that is not our color. That's a Ranger product. We sell it, of course. But look how nice it matches our cardstock. So, like that. Now, I was going to mat this directly on my card base. And you could, but I almost think I want to try pulling that pop of gold out. So I'm going to cut real quick some gold paper and see if I can um, see how it looks if I add this. It's actually late at night. I'm making this video. Probably everyone in the house is sleeping except me and Addison because the boys are not um, night owls like we are. Ooh, that's pretty. Okay. Really like this. I'm going to go ahead and add that. I think because of how thick this is, I'm going to go ahead and... Ooh, use my liquid glass that had this gigantic bubble. If you heard it pop, it was a liquid glass bubble that popped. I'm just cleaning my nozzle because I'm horrible at that. Horrible, horrible at keeping it clean. I don't like to be bothered. I don't know why. It saves time in the long run. Okay, I got a lot of liquid glass right here. I'm just going to pull that in. Popsicle sticks are my friends. I have a whole bunch on my table. Popsicle sticks and baby wipes are my friend. Okay, so I had a feeling this was a scrap of gold paper, and I'm all about using my scraps. 
that means it's slightly shorter. So I'll probably trim my card base, but let me fold this up first. Liquid glass, you don't want to have to mess with too much. Let me try this. Just because it, it's strong stick and it's not the friendliest to moving. I'm not sure. I wonder if the scrap was not straight. Probably. It's the story of my life. And you find out when you're doing a video. Okay, so you can see this white um, strip along the bottom. Oh boy, I hope uh, I have enough space on my phone for this video. I'm almost done. Just trimming this off with my scissors. Now I'm going to attach this with liquid glass just because the gold tape is, or the gold paper is um, slippery and metallic, so certain things don't stick as nice. And now the one nice thing about this gold paper is because it is slippery, you can wipe the liquid glass off before it dries. And um, it won't be obvious like it would on some projects. Okay, there we go. This right here, very cute, just a note. Definitely stands out in person. Looks really nice. Background is fun. I hope if you have some dist distressed oxides, you'll give it a try. And I'm going to go ahead and make something fun with these and show you those in a picture. So enjoy. Sorry I missed being live. I'm taping this early because I am supposed to be at our school when I would be doing this live. So. Hope you like it. If you make something, let me see it. And I will be back with more next Wednesday. Thanks, guys.